Hi Hello. everyone, welcome back to Conceptual Inc. Kingston, yeah. I'm Nia. It's been a while. Today, we wanted to cover what is apparently, according to Kingston, considered the most powerful tool in Photoshop. A lot, a lot of people it's, mention it. It's about. not, yeah, it's quite hard to find yeah. within Photoshop itself. Um, we want to share this because a lot of people nowadays in concept art, we're using 3D, we're using Blender to create a base model and then bring it into Photoshop to paint over and add texture. So how do we add those imperfections and details? You spend so much time to build a 3D model, you want a quicker way to add in the artistic side or imperfections that you can save more energy into the final finishing and all mm -hmm, this. Mm -hmm. So let's jump right into Photoshop here. So here we're in Photoshop, I modeled in Blender and now mm. we put into Photoshop, I've put some textures and some base colors on top. Mm. So now we're going to try and see how we can put different textures. Yeah. Right? But before that, um, do you want to show how to find the... Uh, yeah, sure. Tonya have been working on the overall texture. So this is our layer panel. And we have a new layer, this will be activated. And there's a lot of setting over here. Uh, some are for the brights, this uh, for the dark. And this area is for the contrast, bright and dark. Mm -hmm. uh, I never use this area, I don't know. Uh, Tonya said I use it. <laughs> <she used a lot. laughs> no, they're useful. The, no, the luminosity and okay. the fun. Okay, never mind. The, no, it's useless. So <laughs> because once you learn this, you'll find that. So setting a little slow and mm. it's not easy to control. In my layer, if I double click, you will see this area. This is the control that we want. The name is blend if it's a blending layer. Yeah. If I'm selecting the, the bricks, you know, and double click, uh, this is where to control this layer, right? If I move the dark, so all the dark from that layer will disappear mm. from this side. This means don't show this layer, the dark part. So if I move this side of the arrow, all the white color will disappear until you will only see the, dark the, values. the values over here. But you can also create a transition, so like showing half half, zero to hundred. Mm -hmm. Here is controlling this layer itself. The bottom bar is controlling how it, it displays the stuff underneath. underneath mm -hmm. Yes, Tonya will demonstrate a little how to add more texture on this piece of wall, mm -hmm. right? Okay. With this blend it tool. So, I just found this texture online and duplicated a few times. So once you have a texture here you can go control shift u or command shift u to change it to black and gray then we're going to transform this pressing the control key um, to fit the perspective of our wall yeah there will be a lot of people saying uh, there's perspective tool or something we don't we don't really care about those and then i'm gonna go double click into this layer style now we want to get rid of the Gray, yeah, because I only gray. want the brick yeah. mortar, the lines. So I'm going to go to the current layer and bring down the lighter values. So you can see all the lighter values and I'm only left with the brick lines. And then I can press Option or Alt to create that transition for a more natural-ish. And that's something that I want. Mm -hmm. Then if I want to, because now it's just black and gray, if I want to change the color as well, I can go to control U to my hue saturation, colorize it. And then if I want to add the saturation, I can make it a, a reddish, brownish mm. color. So it can be easier to transit into the texture. Yeah, yeah. yeah the so base texture. maybe that's something that I want. Yeah. So now it's pretty bold, right? It's pretty obvious. Mm. So we can go down and add a clipping mask on top. Mm. When I fill the clipping mask with black here, it's all gone, right? But we can paint it back in with a soft brush using white and slowly paint it back in. Yeah. So in this way, you can control the amount of detail that we can see from this distance, yeah. the camera distance to the object. And usually with textures, a lot of times you only really see it in the mid-tones. If there's a lot of highlight or a lot of shadow, it mm -hmm. won't be as clear in those areas. So I'm only bringing it in we a subtle way. Yeah. yeah, we also don't want the surface texture to overpower the real structure. If you have too much like that, you can just go back to black 
and um, make it more subtle and like take some away from the mask. Yeah, we we'll always use this kind of masking yeah. methods. Tony already controlled it pretty well with the subtlety, but sometimes you may want the brick to have a little more bright tone or the dark a little or the darker. texture yes. come out a little bit more. So uh, with the similar workflow, I could actually create a color dodge layer to make some very quick bright tone mm. and use a very simple white color and soft brush just creates a little highlight overall but of course we, we won't be using everything so we can double click follow the same concept but we are using the underlying layer move the dark, dark away so, mm. so the dark area will not able to pick up any mm. lights from this layer. Like the gaps between the yeah. bricks. And have. also the texture, you see, there's mm. a very sharp transition that I want it to blend in a little smoother. So I can hold Option or Alt. Alternate, split this transition area. So here, the value will be 0 and then 0 to 100, right, as a transition. And the white will remain 100%. Mm. Okay. We will create a mask, fill black, and use a soft brush by the second round of control how much we want to show. I just want a little, right? Mm. And near the focal area or the area that people care more, more I will sharpness. try to yes push mm. a little more contrast for the shot. Mm -hmm. Oh, you create can also it. show them how to change the color of oh. shadows and yeah, light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so this is also a really quick way. Yeah, so um, here, the shadow is pretty much straight from Blender. Blender, right? yeah. yeah. So Blender shadow is a 3D Very viewport, viewport shadow. Basically just darken mm. with black. In real life, shadow is actually absent from light. If the light is yellow color, then the shadow will have less of that color, mm. which usually show as a cool color instead mm. of just at black. Or sometimes it could even be more saturated. Yeah, so we need to cool down the color instead of just darken the color. There's many ways to do it, but I, I want to full use of this Blending. blend if mode. <laughs> Pick whatever color and make just make it a, a little cooler. Okay. And lower the saturation. Uh, same value, I didn't change the value at all. And just put it as it is. <laughs> and and maybe cool down or play with the saturation a little bit. A little cooler. Okay. Double click. And get rid of all the white because we want to leave the shadow. So you see, when I start moving this side of the arrow, all those underneath white color disappear from my layer. So what left is the, the value from here to here. The dark layers. So when I move underneath. it further, all the bright to the gray slowly disappear until it only left the shadow area. Right? Mm. And I can also split by option or alternate to create a transition. So now all the shadow will have a cooler color than earlier. You can still play with layer setting over multiply. here. Multiply, overlay or whatever, or just keep it as normal so you know the color is the color mm. that you choose. And create a layer mask, spray with black. Paint it back in. Paint it by yourself so that you have full control. It could be subtle and some may not see it that clear, but. From fundamental point of view, this is the and right And this is concept. a really good non-destructive method actually because yeah. you can go back to that layer and because now if I want it to, the contrast to be even higher and yeah, make it I darker, can, you can I can go totally in just select back the layer and play with contrast, play with color. Like you, you know you're doing the right things, right? The color is cooler than earlier, right? So you can also change the hue or saturation to like let's say you want it to be even more cool, cooler, or or even anything. warmer. Yeah, yeah. Or warmer than earlier. Mm. Yeah. All right. I mean, those are a few examples, but with this there's tool, a there's more, a multitude yeah. of ways you could use this. Correct. Right? But we will. Um, yeah, there's a lot of other things we would love to show you guys mm -hmm. in the future. All right. Yeah. So that's it for that's today. It for today. Yeah, we wanted to try and do more of these bite-sized 
videos, I guess, yeah. because we've been getting a lot of comments in, on our previous videos that we tried to cram a lot of yeah. information into one episode. Yeah, because from our point of view, we understand that the attention span for social media. Yeah, we, we were reading the, up on like, yeah. oh, what's the optimal what's the length for a video to retain attention span? But now you guys are like, oh, can you slow down? So you know what? Through the algorithm, we're yeah, just gonna. It's, it's a lot easier for us yeah. to just talk and draw and demonstrate in, in real life. time. That's how yeah. our mm. daily job like. Yeah, so let us know if you have any other things you would want to mm. um, for us to explore in Photoshop or even just like outside of yeah. uh, technical because we're focusing be on one thing every yeah, yeah, every yeah. episode. Because we always worry that the video is too long if we mm. do a live demo. Mm. Uh, but if we only focus on one small bite size information, Mission. it should be good. Yeah. And we also want it to be something that you guys can follow along mm. step by step and yeah, yeah. try. All right. Yeah. yeah. That's all for That's this episode. All. Thank you guys. Yeah. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.